but I've been sitting next to Joan Rivers for what, over three years, every week, and finally I get to get her in bed and I'm so excited because I hear she gives really good head. She just takes some teeth out, goes to town, really excited. Thanks to Audible for supporting In Bed with Joan. Audible.com is the leading provider of audiobooks with more than 150,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature, including fiction, nonfiction, and periodicals. Audible keeps you entertained during just about any activity, like walking, doing cardio, sitting in traffic, standing in line, or cleaning your house. Audible is offering In Bed with Joan viewers a free audiobook to give you a chance to try out the service. Perhaps you would enjoy I Hate Everyone Starting With Me, written and read by Joan Rivers. Or, let's explore Diabetes with Owls, written and read by David Sedaris. To download an audiobook of your choice for free, go to audible.com slash joan. That's audible.com slash joan. And now, on to the show. Welcome to In Bed with Joan. Let's see who's coming out of my closet today. Hello? Ah! George Cassiopolis. <laughs> Yay! Come join me. Hi, Joan. So, how, many men, how many men have you brought out of the closet? Gay men, that is. They've what? seen, they've come out, they see my body, and they've gone right back in. It's like a U-turn. <laughs> they see my body, they don't bang me, they bang a Yui. <laughs> That's what's happened. Let me tell you why I'm so happy to have you. Because I can pronounce your name. You're the first <laughs> guest I can say, George Cassiopolis. And it only took you like, what, Two four years. months to figure it out? <laughs> Two years. With a sign at the bottom of the camera. Oh, always a sign. <laughs> Don't you forget names too, though. Well, um, now I do because I'm meeting more people, so right. I don't know how you do it. How, I mean, you walk more. into a party, everyone knows you, and they've been on our show once, and our show is on now, what, four years? Yeah, we're going on four years. Four right? years. How can you remember all these? It's possible. I mean, the famous ones I remember, it's the ones that aren't famous that I don't remember. The ones that think they're famous. But this is what, all right, let me ask you this because this occurs to you, but people will just come up to me and be like, hey, George. And I just assume that they know who I am, that I know them, but they don't know me. They know me from television. And you, so you always go, good to, I always go, good to see you. So, <laughs> Happy holidays. They may just be someone who's gonna give you a job. Yeah. Right? I'm always very pleasant. <laughs> Melissa calls it my cockroach smile. Hello. <laughs> Pleasant, but a little condescending. Warm, but not inviting. <laughs> you can come over to my table, but you can't sit down. Yeah, exactly. Well, but it's that's you setting boundaries. This is all very new to me. I mean, it's weird. I don't go anywhere. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Fashion Police was not the first television you did. Well, it was the first thing that gave me any notoriety. I mean, no one knew who I was. But you were on the Today Show. Well, I was definitely had done TV before, but nothing where anyone, nothing on a weekly basis where... Right people where it would make you famous, which right. I hate using that word, I, it's very weird. It's weird, it it's, it's awesome, but it's weird. Yeah, but it's nice. It's great. It no, gets I'm so flattered that anyone even recognizes or notices me ever, and I don't, you know, I don't go anywhere thinking anyone knows who I am, but apparently they do. Is it from our show? Yeah. yeah. Do you give autographs? No, everyone wants to take photos. Which is kind of easier, right? It's super easy. And then if they're shy, now well, I just say, Well, your oh, you name would take three hours. <laughs> you need a big paper. You think I George really Apa <laughs> Liss. My signature is this. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I don't have time. How has your life changed privately? Um, it hasn't because, again, I don't, I don't go... If I think if I went anywhere thinking that people knew who I was, I'd be kind of a weirdo, but I don't. I just go out and I assume that I'm just the same person that I was four years ago. And so I don't know, I guess it's just, it's it's changed that, you know, I have people coming up to me in airports who know me. It's very strange, Joan. I mean, that's, you've been like, you know, you've been famous forever, so. And it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's wonderful because it's just a little amount of attention. It's not like, you know, I met with, I was at the Soho house in Miami and there's paparazzi trying to get Leonardo's picture. You know, no one's paparazzi me, which is great. I mean, I'll take the, you know, people coming up to me in the mall yeah. saying hello, but I don't want paparazzi in my face. But you got into Soho house. <laughs> well, of course, Joan. <laughs> <laughs> 
kidding? <laughs> you also were on C Magazine as an editor. Yeah, I did. I was a fashion editor before. I was at the New York Times Magazine for eight years. And then I was at C for, I'm still at C. I just don't do anything. Why <laughs> have I never been on the cover? I mean, who could be the biggest C? Am I right? <laughs> The song from Sea to Shining Sea. Ed guess it was about me going from LA to New York. I mean, here's the right, laugh. Thank song. God. What you know, with fame comes jealousy. And with jealousy comes people saying mean things. It's yeah. all part of it. Not that you and I know anything about that from fashion police. No, no. But what's the meanest thing that you've heard said about you? Oh my gosh! Uh, that I because you I Googled. You can't Google yourself. You just never. Can't do it. I will never do it again. I can't do it. Someone was saying. Yeah, I just saw some tr some forum or chat or uh, whatever the hell, and people talking about me, which is again very strange that people are talking about you. And uh, someone was saying that I was a huge opportunist, and they <laughs> met me at a party, and all I was doing was looking over their shoulder, like you know, waiting to find someone else to right, talk to. Right. Right. I was doing that. Maybe he was homely. Yeah, or maybe he was just an idiot or super boring and, you know, whatever. Right, like, right. Or maybe he wasn't very nice. I don't, you know. But And maybe I was looking for somebody else. And good. Yeah. And too bad. Exactly. Look right in the camera and say that. Yeah, and too bad. Wrong camera. And yeah, and too bad. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I can't even, I can't, I can't look at all those things. Because it's just like, you just can't do it. Well, what's come now also with our fame from Fashion Police is um, you now have great influence. You would pick one of the hundred most influential gay men. Yes. So what does that mean? Are you outing celebrities? Are you teaching straight <laughs> people to go fabulous? What are well, you doing? What you influence know, are you influencing them? I, I think initially when I started going out on TV stuff, I wanted to be the person that was the fashion gay that wasn't the stereotypical one because what I saw on TV were a lot of really, really flamboyant men that all, it, which there's nothing wrong with. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, but there are, no, it's fine, no, it's, it's, fine. Fine. it's fine. And I'm not saying I'm this butch guy, I'm certainly not, but I don't, I'm not flaming that right. in that way. And right. I th think they were a misrepresentation of just the whole gay agenda, so to speak. <laughs> but it's good to be influential, you can get share. Tickets at half price, right? True, true. Right. What about? Or I can go to Adam Lambert concerts, you know, oh, for free. Would you go? I, I just went to Miami. And? It, it, it was great. It was a great show. I was a little bit surprised at the the uh, people in the audience, but. Who were in the audience? It was like a Barry Manilow crowd. Older women. Yeah, older women. I was kind of surprised. But good for him if he could get Barry Manilow's career. Take it. In a second. In a second. So that weren't... man's rich. Oh, beyond rich. Yeah. What about, what did he wear on stage? This is how we bump. So we're like, he's rich. Yeah. He, he and I. That's why we're friends. Off camera, we have discussions who's rich, who has a good house. What about at Fashion Police? Because people ask me these questions. I'm asking them. Um, when you have to take a friend and say she doesn't look good, how many friends have you actually lost how how many have been that stupid that got so mad at you? you know, I mean it's the ones there's I'm sure there's some that I know about and some that I don't know about you know what I mean like there's probably some that are nice to my face and then when I leave they're like at best yeah um but you know whatever we're just talking about clothes I mean what are you gonna do do you ever hold back when it's a friend uh do I hold back when it's a friend um hmm Yes, probably a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I do too. Wait, when you should not be that... saying such things in front of the boss, George. <laughs> but wait a second. When Kerry Washington wore that Prada dress that made her look like uh, Petticoat Junction, I would, did not hold, because I said she looks like Petticoat mm -hmm. Junction. I don't think I held back. I'll be taking copious notes no. tomorrow on Mr. Kratziopoulos' <laughs> performance and submitting them for no, review. You oh, know I'm just kidding. I, mean. I know you're kidding. Tell the celebrities, because he still styles celebrities. Who do you style? Name some names. Well, no, I'm not styling anyone for the red carpet right now. That's interesting. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> interesting, though. It's like, it's the whole styling thing is just such a, it's, it's changed so much in the last 20 years. I mean, it's become, 
a mega humongous business. And before, when it first started, it was an honor. It was a privilege to be, you know, Mr. Armani loaned this to me. You know, this was give, the Dior loaned this to me. Mrs. Prada loaned this to me, et cetera, loaned. And now there's so much payola. There's so much, there's so much crazy stuff going on that the business has completely changed. And the younger actresses, you know, like the Nicole Kidmans, those women are more elegant about it. They did it when it was not a payola kind of situation. And the younger ones have no shame. So they're they're like, wait, what, can I, I want to get paid for this? Wait, what are they paying me to wear those, that jewelry? And it's, and it's out in the open now. Like before it used to be more, it was more, you were more gracious about it. Right. And now it's not. There's like agents, there's deals made, there's all kinds of stuff. So they'll wear something they don't like. If say Dior said, I mean, uh, we'll give you $30,000 to wear the ring. They'll put the ring on. Yeah, I'm sure. It. Wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, I would. Like I'm begging you. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I'm sure there's ones I'll, that... I'll wear, <laughs> I'll wear a Nazi uniform. <laughs> no question. <laughs> Don't you think stars should try to look human? Absolutely. They should look like movie stars. That's what my book's about. Show us the book. See? Called... The key to creating movie star style. Who do you like think that. are the three most glamorous stars today? Today, um, Jennifer Lopez, I think, always looks super elegant and put together. Emma Stone, I think, is gets it. She's into movie stars. She's into looking good. I like Jessica Chastain quite a bit because I think she always looks elegant and she's not pushing the limits. Who would you like to get your hands on? Hmm. Oh, my gosh. I know who is looking horrible nowadays. Hmm. I don't know. Okay. That's a tough one. That's always a tough one. Now you're because so many girls are very hit, hit or miss. You know what I mean? They're inconsistent. Like, I don't think Jennifer Lawrence is looking fabulous right now. No, but not at I, all. Do I want to get my hands on her? No. No. <laughs> Tell the story. How she loved our show. Oh, yes, tell she the gossip. Her. He's going to well, give you a piece of gossip. Well, I can't tell the gossip, Joan, because it's too insider. I'm Nobody watches the show. Yes, it's the they internet. do. It's on the internet. No, I was, you know, I, as you know, there was Jennifer Lawrence controversy, and I had known that she was a fan of the shows, and then suddenly she's not a fan of the show, which I always thought was very, I think there was someone who was influencing her. But she also said that we're the reason that women have poor body, you know, poor body and beauty issues. It's like, really? You're on the cover of Vogue. You're in, you know, airbrushed to death. She has a team of stylists, a team of hair and makeup people. You can't walk around making statements like that when you're not real yourself. I mean, real women don't have all of these things. So it's just kind of a, you know, it's a, it's a stupid statement to make. Yeah. I wish it got us more press. Is there anyone in your life that you said something to that you'd like to apologize for? This is your opportunity. <laughs> I was home for Thanksgiving and apparently I'd insulted my brother's friend's baby because apparently <laughs> it's not okay to say that your child looks like a little Adam's family baby. <laughs> and I meant it with love. So I guess if you just didn't understand that, then that's your problem. They were upset. I'm, I'm so upset, John. <laughs> okay, you guys, it's ridiculous, All right? So I'm at my brother's the christening of my niece, okay? And this is a terrible this is a terrible yeah. no, because I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. Okay, but listen, let me just ask you guys. And you, you guys are moms, right? So, yeah. Okay, tell the story. I'm telling you. All right, so I'm at the christening, right, of my niece. So my brother's friend and his wife come up with their little baby with the dark hair, pasty white skin, and the little girl is dressed from head to toe in black. And I was just saying how when I was, you know, worked at the New York Times, I was a kids market editor, how black clothing was very difficult to find, and then it became in, came into fashion, you know, talking about that, like, oh, it's interesting that you found it, I guess it's more available now. And I said, oh, she looks like a little Adam's family baby. And I said it like that. And then a month later, I find out that they think I'm the devil. They hate me. They, are, they think I'm the most horrible person ever because I insulted their baby. So how was that an insult to their baby? I didn't say the truth, which is... Just no. say, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I think say, I know you got the truth about the story. But what? you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sorry for saying the truth about your heart. <laughs> <No. laughs> I'll say it for him. George is sorry about saying the truth, but you're a really ugly child. <laughs> now, oh here's God. the I'm opposite, uh -oh. which is called <laughs> sit on it and rotate.
All right, so I was working in the stock room in Lord & Taylor in Skokie, Illinois, when I was a teenager, essentially, and there was this assistant store manager who used to, he told me that I had delusions of grandeur, and all I want to say to you now is, fuck you, <laughs> look at me now. <laughs> And he's probably still there. I have no idea where he is, but I, that always, I don't know why that always stuck in my head. To tell a kid yeah, that. that he has delusions of grandeur. Look, maybe I did. Good. It was good. Maybe all, well, not all children should have delusions of, I think too many kids have delusions of grandeur now. I think delusions of grandeur a little push bit it forward. Good. Yeah, absolutely. Now, speaking of delusions of grandeur, <laughs> I think my daughter is the smartest thing in the world. She's so come in here, Melissa, and She's clearly deluded. <laughs> Okay, so Jeremy, play a little game here. Okay. Look at your own worried because it's No, me. I'm actually not worried. It's a good all. game. It's a um, good game. Where it, it's it's dead or alive. One oh. of the things, one of the people I'm saying it has to be gone, and one gets to live on. And if you don't want to say you want them dead, you could say you want them on permanent vacation. Okay. But the key is to why. Oh, okay. So our first pairing, Rihanna okay. or Katy Perry? Oh. That's a tough one. Wait, I thought I was going to make you easy questions. Why would you do that? Well, I mean, Katie alive for sure, because I've known her since before she was Katy Perry. But then I have no reason to kill her. <laughs> Too bad. Too bad. Okay. Victoria Beckham mm -hmm. or Diane Kruger? Oh. Mm, they both actually have really good sense of humor, believe it or not. Yeah, and you love, you always one. rave about both of them. Yeah. Um, I would say keep... Diane Kruger alive because she has more diversity in what she wears. It's more interesting to see what she wears. And kill Victoria Beckham because she kind of wears a lot of the same stuff. You're tough. And then David would be available. Yes. Yeah, then, but David. then you'd have to hear, as long as he has a gag in his mouth. I mean, have you heard, you've heard that You're man Greek. speak? Yeah. Come on. That is not erection inducing. You think? <laughs> you think? No. I mean, Speaking of erections, <laughs> Tommy Lee or John Hamm? Oh. Um... Well, Sarah Silverman told me that I look like John Hamm, but a mini John Hamm. <laughs> <laughs> so we kind of Oh, you know what? Hell, John Hamm alive, because then I'd be having sex with myself. Um, and then Tommy <laughs> Lee, no, that penis has been in so many things. And, you you know, wouldn't want to touch yeah, it. No, I wouldn't want to touch that. Not even with like 12 condoms over it. Okay. So we'd kill him, yes. Okay, now those are the warm up questions. Oh, shit. So now Here they come. <laughs> Kelly? No. Or Juliana. <laughs> that's just as bad. That I can't. I mean, yeah, come no. on. That's like. Uh, yeah, George? Oh, no. Just think of one as going on a permanent vacation. No. I. No. No. I mean, can I kill them both? Yes! <laughs> there we go. They're both dead. No. I love them. I mean, they're great. Did I sound disenchanted? That's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I do love them. I mean, come on. You we love each other. And love it's each. not bullshit. Like, okay. you know. And this is, I think, the hardest one of all. Both very powerful <laughs> women, both very influential women, and both women that have an extreme impact on your career. <laughs> Oh, no, now I know who it is. Anna Wintour. <laughs> or Joe Rivers. Oh, that is so easy. Oh, my God, kill that skinny Vogue bitch. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> it's all about Joe. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I love you so much. Everybody, George cuts the up. <laughs> Show oh, my them. gosh. I thought well, you were going to make me choose between oh, you two. Oh. No. So we always ask our guests... Do the final clap to turn off our lights. I will do the honor. Thanks to Audible.com for supporting today's show. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audible.com slash Joan. That's audible.com slash Joan. Wow, that was uh, something. It was not what I was expecting. I thought I'd get a little bit more foreplay. But uh, it was fun. Melissa definitely gave me some zingers there. And uh, hopefully I didn't come off like too much of an asshole. But uh, that's what it's like. In bed with Joan. I loved having George on. I mean, he's adorable and he's warm. And unfashionable, he's, we're truly like a family. 
So I was very grateful I didn't have to tell him that he was being fired and we replacing him with Carson Kressley. Let me know who you'd like to see in bed with me. You can do it by sending me a message on Facebook or Twitter.